Past the hour, joining us now, Academy Award-winning filmmaker Kevin Costner and John Baird, co-authors of the new adventure novel, The Explorers Guild, Volume 1. And I, this is huge. I mean, and it's, um, it's not what we expect from you, or is it? Well, I, you know, I like long, epic things. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> there so, you go. So come on, let's wait. This is amazing. You know, I go to the frontier. I'm about exploring, right? You know. I want to go home and keep reading. This is so beautifully written. Well, don't let me keep written. reading. How did you guys start working <laughs> together, though? Because that's a complicated relationship. Yeah, it was about eight or nine years ago. I was with uh, my brother and a friend of ours. We were taking this crazy sort of half-formed idea around about a secret society of explorers. And we presented it as a return to that classic adventure storytelling. And we were lucky enough to be able to put it in front of him. I, I think as a fan of those same old stories we used to love, uh, he sparked to it pretty quickly. What is the storyline? Give me the storyline. Uh, Give me the pitch. The elevator pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, I like that. Sit down so you're ready for this. Do the pitch. Uh, well, it's it's uh, it's World War One, and there's a secret society of explorers uh, canvassing the globe looking for a mythical city called Shambhala, uh, and we learn. War and really the fate of civilization are tied in with this city and its secrets. So it's critical that it be found and that it be found by the right people. And it's just as important we keep the wrong people away. So, so it's really what is this city? Can it be found? Who's going to get there first? And really how do we know who ought to find it and who, who should be kept away? I don't think it's clear to the end. And, and what attracted Indiana Costner? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, you know, when he first explained it to me, he was babbling like he is now. Like the, 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 the <laughs> I was having a hard time following the story. but. Uh, you know, I, I like the I, I like the long format of of, of, and of going around the world, and, and uh, I like kind of the period because it's kind of sometimes when we followed our heroes back then, w when they got in trouble, they didn't have some secret weapon that got them out of it. A lot of times it was their fists, a lot of times it was their wit, their kind of sense no of, drones. their sense of resourcefulness. So, you know, and, and the. And, and I like these kind of stories, and we we keep reaching back to last century to get these. And we're not, you know, who's writing them this century. And, and uh, you know, oftentimes those guys uh, w that wrote those stories were the people that were on the freighters, were in the Yukon, were in the jungles. And now the people may be writing adventure stories, they get their ideas off video games, you know. And it's really, it's really not that dangerous. You know, they don't have that kind of hands-on life experience. How, how often does it strike you, given the business that's been in your life, just, just that fact, the, the, the powerful story, the real story, the human beings with a beginning, a middle, and an end, a wow story, have now taken a back seat, it seems, to like these cartoonish, huge, epic movies. Yeah, I mean, I love, uh, I, you know, I, I, I miss those days. In fact, even, you know, I, for, for a while there, I thought I would read Moby Dick to my children, you know, at the dinner table. And after about three, three nights, I could just, I, the thing that I wanted for them to stay at the table, they were just, it was kind of putting them to sleep. Not because Melville put them to sleep, but it's heavy slogging. Heavy duty, it's heavy duty reading, but I so yearn for that kind of story and, and uh, those kind of men. 